Hi there, welcome to another in our series of videos on behavioural economics. And in this session, we're going to take a few minutes to think about the important topic of loss aversion. So consider this situation. Uh, pick one of the two options that you think is more attractive. Option A is £800 with a probability of 50%. Or option B is you win a sure £400. What would your choice be? And here's another option. Pick the two options. So one option here that you regard as more attractive. Option C is a loss of £800 but with a probability of 50%. Option D is a sure loss of 400 Your choice is what? Well, loss aversion refers to people's tendency to prefer avoiding losses to acquiring equivalent gains. In other words, it's, it's claimed by psychologists that it's better to not lose £20 than to find £20. In this example, the expected gain is £400 in the first uh, scenario. The expected loss is £400 in the second scenario. But typically people are willing, more willing to take option A, £800 with a probability of 50%, but switch to option D, they want to try and avoid if they want a loss of £800 with a probability of 50%. This is what we mean by loss aversion. Here's another example. A friend will offer you a simple bet on the toss of a fair coin, heads or tails, you make the call. However, if you lose, you have to pay £50. That's the loss. And the question that's then asked is, what is the minimum amount, the minimum sum that you need to win on the other, the other side of the bet to make this bet attractive enough for you? So what do you reckon the answer is? Well, I mean, you know, the evidence seems to be that people will go out their way to avoid a loss. A loss is felt more keenly than a commensurate gain. So typically, if you offer this people a bet, people want at least 100, 125 pounds, perhaps even more, to compensate them for the loss of 50 pounds if the bet goes either way. And again, we call this loss aversion. Loss aversion is at the heart of prospect theory developed by Kahneman and Tversky. And Kahneman and Tversky found that people are biased in their real estimation of the probability of an event happening. Uh, for example, they tend to overestimate or overweight both low and high probabilities. A good example of over, overweighting a very low probability is your chance of winning a big prize on the lottery, for example. But people typically, systematically often, underweight or underemphasize what are basically medium probabilities. Consider this example. Uh, which of the two options is most attractive? Option A, which is a, a payment of £2,000 uh, with a probability of 33%. £1,920 with a probability of 66%. And nothing with a probability of 1%. Option B is a guaranteed payout of £1,920. Well, typically a lot of people go immediately for option B. They, they want the guaranteed money. Uh, there's a probability they'll win nothing, even though the probability is 1%. There's a probability they'll get the £1,920 in option A, but there's only a two-thirds probability. And there's a 33% chance, a one-third chance, they'll actually get more. Indeed, if you do the maths, option A gives an expected utility, an expected payout, if you like, of over £1,920. The evidence is that most people go for option B because of prospect theory. So prospect theory and loss aversion can be illustrated in a diagram. On the X continuum here, we have losses and gains. And on the Y, values from positive through to negative. So if we take a simple reference point, uh, whatever that happens to be, a particular price, what have you, uh, the, the basic idea behind prospect theory is that people feel a loss more than they feel a gain. So for the same reference point here, there's the value of a gain. Same, va uh, same reference point, there's the value of a loss. Now we often find loss aversion 
in financial markets. Um, people, when they're holding on to a stock or a share, for example, that's making a loss, will typically not sell it because they, they want to avoid realising the loss by selling the share. Perhaps they have in their mind an expectation that things will turn around, the share price will increase and all, and all will be well. But again, typically they hold on to paper losses for too long. Um, another good example is holding on to a loss-making house when the market is falling. It's probably better to sell the house, cut your losses and move on. But people don't. They suffer from loss aversion. And typically, people also sell their gains too early. Again, because they want to realise a gain quickly and avoid potential loss in the future. So how does this work in terms of behavioural economics? Well, businesses can take advantage of loss aversion through their marketing. And an easy way in which they do that is when they're framing a choice for consumers, they place a heavy emphasis on the discount rather than the surcharge. So, for example, a football club might say to its uh, season ticket fans, if you buy your season ticket before the 1st of July, you'll get a discount of £50, effectively a gain of £50. But if you renew your ticket after the 1st of July, season ticket prices will be 50% higher, effectively a surcharge. That is quite a strong behavioural impulse to season ticket holders to buy their season ticket ahead of the 1st of July deadline because they want to avoid the loss of £50 if they if they delay. Another really good example is uh, is booking online for uh, for flights and a surcharge is often applied if you book by credit card instead of using a debit card. The surcharge effect is often so powerful that people who never normally use their own debit cards will get them out of their wallet uh, to avoid the surcharge. A really, really good example, finally, of loss aversion, how to avoid it, is the famous Save More Tomorrow scheme invented by Richard Thaler. Save More Tomorrow was a pension scheme for savers in America. And under Thaler's innovative idea, investors signed up for an occupational pension that cost them nothing until they actually received a pay rise from their job. At that point, a percentage of their pay rise, a fairly small percentage, would be automatically be deducted and directed into their pension fund. Thinking behind this was that you only started to contribute to the pension fund when your pay was rising. That made sure the saver never saw an actual reduction in his or her disposable income. And as a result of this nice, neat behavioural nudge, uh, pension contributions among the Save More Tomorrow group were actually 200% higher than normal. Avoiding loss aversion can be quite a powerful behavioural nudge. So there we go. Hopefully there was an introduction to loss aversion which makes this topic useful for you.